Uh, if you're an oyster person like me, I love my oysters. Have you ever wondered what happens to the shucked shells at the restaurant? A lot of times you just assume they're tossed out in the trash with the other scraps, but conservation groups have been turning that trash, if you will, into treasure. Our Zach Lazare explains how Galveston Bay Foundation's oyster shell recycling program is helping local restaurants save our bay. Its water is a mix between salt and fresh. It's unusually shallow for its size. Ooh, the water is low today. And it's home to a variety of life, including oysters. Just beneath the surface. Important work to restore oyster beds in Galveston Bay is underway. Oysters are born into the water as just little microscopic larvae. So after about two weeks of life, they start to gain weight as they feed and then descend into the water column and they go in search of something hard to attach to. Haley Leha, Galveston Bay Foundation's habitat restoration manager, explains oysters prefer to cement to other shells or oysters because they are reef building organisms. Sometimes those baby oysters will grow about an inch in three months. And just to give you some context, legal size here for commercial harvesting is three inches. So you can get a legal oyster within a year. From served to shot. Shannon Bad is Habitat Restoration Coordinator with GBF. Each week, Bat collects oyster shells from 26 restaurants throughout the greater Houston area. Conservation and sustainability uh, is, is very important to me uh, and to our organization. This is why so Levi Good, chef and owner of Good Company Restaurants, participates in GBS Oyster Reef Restoration Program. Yeah, and just in the last month, we've uh, given back over uh, a ton and a half of oyster shells uh, from just shucking oysters and and uh, and feeding our customers. It really starts with awareness. It starts with knowing what the restaurant you're eating at does with their shells. And then all of a sudden it opens a world of coastal ecology. Pat Murray is president of Coastal Conservation Association. He says he is as impressed with GBF's program as he is with oysters. They're critical, uh, probably much more so than most people know. There's, you know, maybe they get probably their most credit for being a filter feeder that filters up to 50 gallons of water a day per oyster. That's pretty incredible. Um, but what they do for the marine resource in terms of the marine ecology and what they do for our bay systems, our estuaries, is priceless. And if we lose that population, we're, we're losing that water quality and habitat for other organisms to live. Yeah, it's a nice big one. I collect all the bins that have shell in it, dump it into the dump truck, and I head to the next rest next restaurant. At the end of the day, when I've gone to all of our restaurants for that day, I take it to what we call our curing site, and that's where we dump the shell out onto the ground, and it will sit there for at least six months to get rid of all the contaminants on the shell, you know, leftover cheese, you know, any food. There are millions of oyster shells at this curing site. That's about an acre. So we're at our Red Bluff curing site. We separate it out into different piles so we know what's fresh shell and still needs to be cured or cleaned. And that shell then sits in a pile until it reaches about 18 inches. At that time, that pile is uh, essentially stopped and we move on to the next one to start a fresh pile. So then we give that pile time to cure and be exposed to the sun. Throughout that process, we actually come and turn it with a tractor to expose any shells underneath to all that weathering. Are you seeing success? Is your work paying off? Definitely. We're seeing lots of success, particularly down in the West Bay part of the system. That's where it stayed a bit saltier, even with all the freshwater events coming through with Hurricane Harvey and those previous years of flooding. Um, northern parts of the bay are still suffering quite a bit. So the reason we started all this is because there is a loss of this habitat. Hurricane Ike and other subsequent storms have brought in so much sediment, it literally covered up those reefs. This is one of five sites where oyster restoration takes place. We are in Dickinson Bay. This effort is approximately two and a half acres. I'll put him back in his new home. Once clean and cured, oyster shells are brought back to the bay where they build and restore oyster beds to strengthen oyster populations and reduce coastal erosion. Since the program began in 2011, it has collected more than 1,300 tons of shell. For perspective, this has spawned close to 17,000 new oysters to date. I know those volunteers work extremely hard. Yes, indeed. Doing right? what they do. Did you get some grilled oysters at Good Company? Because those are delicious. I did a couple of weeks ago. They invited me back last night, and I uh, the weather, I was like, no. Yeah, you didn't want to drive through the rain.
So they were kind enough to bring these to our station. Okay. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for the smell this morning. It's lovely. <laughs> Um, but these are the oyster shells, and so this is kind of cool. I, we were talking a little bit about this the last hour. So these little areas, I'm not sure which camera. camera. You got th uh, three over there to your this. left. So this obviously is the shell, but this area right here, this is a new spawn. Oh, wow. So when we saw Haley dumping those oysters into the bay, they, they fall in a pyramid-like Mm -hmm. uh, formation mm -hmm. and oysters, uh, the micro larva oysters, attach to the shell that's already in place, the existing shell. They cement to this shell and this is what they spawn. Wow. So, this, if left alone, yeah. would have been an entire new oyster, My a separate goodness. oyster. But now, by putting it back in the bay, you give it another chance. Is that Correct. right? Correct. Okay. You also allow for, you know, barriers to be born, if you will, mm -hmm. for natural disasters, you know, mm -hmm. to protect uh, against storms coming in from the from the Gulf. Gotcha. It's fascinating, right? I didn't yeah. even know that yeah. happened. 50 gallons a day, is that not yeah. insane? I have no idea. That's, that sounds like a lot for sure. Yeah. Well, Zach, thanks for doing that. Yeah. Who makes yes. This happen. Yeah. And those were the couple of the main folks that you talked to. That the lady by the oyster shells, and then the gentleman in the restaurant. They were both conservation folks. Yeah. Yeah. And they have a whole team. I know. Uh, uh, several months ago, I did that story on the debris survey that they do yeah. along the bay. Right. So they do a lot of important work for our area, giving back to the community, and really showing people how living in the city impacts. The entire ecosystem. So if you're walking it. along the bayou and you don't want to carry your bottle anymore and you just toss no, it, don't that do ends it. up in the bay. Yeah. So it all comes back to the bay. You yeah. know, I have a I have a TikTok that did well a couple years back. I have to share it with you. Yeah. It goes on that exact message because when you when you walk the streets, I take my dogs out for yeah. my dog out for a walk mm -hmm. around the neighborhood, and you see these little blue sign. What well, signs? I don't know what you call them. Little decals placards. or placards. Yeah. yeah, little circles, and they say exactly what you said. Watch this uh, this drain here. Uh -huh. Whatever whatever goes in here goes, goes to the bay, right, yeah. and it's that little reminder for folks walking around. It doesn't help the person driving by and throwing stuff out of their right. car, but you know, keep that little reminder going. That's right. For what it what it's worth. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate Enjoyed it. that. Yeah. yeah.